Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Velilene Ngosi. In this lesson, we are looking at the negative feedback mechanism controlling carbon dioxide level in the blood. So today we will be looking at how our body controls the carbon dioxide levels. And then like always, uh, we will start our videos with the examination guidelines. So this is the, the examination guideline is for life sciences. We are on endocrine system and the homeostasis. So today we will be looking at the negative feedback mechanism controlling blood carbon dioxide levels. So this is what we will be talking about in this video. So without wasting more time, let's get to it. So here I have this diagram. So this diagram is representing the negative feedback mechanism. The definition of the negative feedback mechanism is a mechanism that detects changes or imbalance in the internal environment and it also restores balance. So for negative feedback mechanism to take action, there must be a stimulus. So the stimulus is the one that causes a change or causes the imbalance. So after the stimulus has caused the imbalance, there will be a receptor. So the receptor will be stimulated by the changes or the receptor will detect that there is a changes. Then this receptor will send a message to the control center control center could be a gland or it could be a brain so the control center is the one that will send the information to the effector so that the effector can take the correct action so the effector after the effector has taken the action so the effector will reverse the action of the stimulus so that it will maintain balance or it will restore the balance so this is how the negative feedback is functioning so this is this diagram explain the process very easily so since today we are on controlling the carbon dioxide level in the blood so these are the parts that are taking action to control the carbon dioxide levels in the blood like we have a carotid artery which is the receptor we have the medulla oblongata, which is control center, and then we have diaphragm, which is effector, and the heart also is an effect. So what happened? It's okay. Let me explain the carotid artery. So a carotid artery it's a blood vessel that takes oxygenated blood from the heart to the brain. So they are found on each side of the neck. So we have two carotid artery. So inside the carotid artery there is a chemoreceptor. So the chemoreceptors are detecting the changes or the chemical changes in the blood. If there is a chemical changes in the blood, the chemoreceptors are stimulated. So, and then what happened if the carbon dioxide level in the blood is increases, so the pH level of the blood, it goes down or the blood becomes more acidic. And then when they becomes more acidic, the chemoreceptors in the, inside the carotid artery are stimulated. And then when they are stimulated, they send the message to medulla oblongata. So the medulla oblongata is the one that will take the action so that the, the level of carbon dioxide it returns to normal. So it will send the message to diaphragm and then to the heart so that the heart can beat faster and the diaphragm contract more and then so that the breathing rate will increase and then the and then carbon dioxide will be released in a much faster so uh, let me explain the process in a simple way so when the carbon dioxide level in the blood increases above normal uh, here i have this i will explain this showing you in the structure uh, what happened is the receptor cells in the carotid artery are stimulated. So like I just said, the carotid artery, the, the receptor cells are the chemoreceptors. So they will be stimulated because the carbon dioxide level in the blood is increasing. So the blood are becoming more acidic. 
and then the receptors will send impulse to the medulla blangard. So the carotid artery receptors, they will send a message to the medulla oblongata say, saying, hey, the blood now are becoming more acidic. So there is a more carbon dioxide in the blood. And then the medulla oblongata will send impulse to the breathing muscles to contract more activity. So when we talk about breathing muscles, we talk about diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. So the intercostal muscles are found between the ribs so that they must contract more actively. And then thereafter, as they contract more actively and increase the rate of breathing. So this will increase the rate of breathing. And then again, another message and impulse is also sent to the heart. So this metal oblongata will send a message to the breathing muscle and the, to the heart so that the heart can beat faster. So if it beat faster, there is an increase in blood flow. So as the blood flow has increased, then more carbon dioxide is exhaled or is taken outside. And then as it taken outside, then the carbon dioxide level returns to normal. So this is how our body controls the level of carbon dioxide in the body. So I hope everything is, make, is making sense now. So this is how we explain. So this information, I got it from the previous question paper. It's a memorandum, this one. So make sure you write exactly like this one so that you will get all. It's about eight, seven to eight marks. So you will get all these eight marks because everything has mentioned here. So when you, we write the negative feedback, we must mention everything. We must mention the receptor here, maybe the receptor, it might be someone who is exercising. I mean the stimulus, it might be for someone who is exercising. And then make sure you mention the receptor, you mention control center, and then you mention the effector. And then you say whatever that it's you are working on, make sure you say it returns to normal so that you will get all the marks. So this is the end of this video. If you have watched it to this far, Thank you very much. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So if you are study, good luck with your studies. Thank you very much. God bless you.